tonight in the Alfred Hospital's intensive care unit. He'd apparently been trying to free some cattle from the fires. He's got 50% burns to his legs. Usually he's a strong one. Yeah, I've got to be strong now. I saw the car, which gave me a terrible fright, was totally crushed. The doctors have just said that I've got some bleeding around my lungs. The heart's not doing anything. At the moment, he's on a significant amount of life support. His heart attack is very bad. I'm sure deep down he knows he can fight this. The sickest patients, the most advanced technology, medical care second to none. It's always a matter of life or death. Well, John came into the ICU, actually, on Sunday morning. He'd apparently been trying to free some cattle from the fires and then sustained burns to his legs and arms and essentially had about a sort of 40, 50% burn. So that's, that already puts him into the more severe end of, the, of patients with burns. John has had his burns scrubbed and dressed in theatre. He's on a ventilator to help him breathe. Now, one of his biggest risks is infection. All intensive care patients are critically ill, so you've got to watch their respiratory status and stuff on the ventilator. It's going to be a, a very long road for him, as if he had months and months of hospital time and recovery at least a couple of years. John's wife, Lorraine, is in shock, still trying to come to grips with her husband's burns. Big rest, John. He's got 50% burns to his legs and his arms, um, the back of his shoulders and up his neck. Just hoping that everything's going to be OK. Because usually he's a strong one. And usually I stress out about things. But yeah, I've got to be strong now. John got burnt trying to save Ian and Judy's daughter's cattle. Jono. My daughter Kylie met him as he got out to her place as the fire was coming towards it and the fire suddenly swung and changed direction and came straight at them. John uh, ended up running in with the cattle through it all and uh, he was transferred down here to the burns unit. And, you know, anyone in with a spot of bother, John's there. And that's the type of bloke he is. He's uh, a terrific bloke. In the trauma part in the intensive care unit, Ken has arrived after a high-speed car crash. Ken was stabilised in the emergency department downstairs, but he has internal injuries, and doctors need to work out what's going on. The doctors have just said that I've got some bleeding around my lungs and diaphragm's torn, which I've got some cuts in my liver, and they're just concerned about my neck and spine. Well, Ken was involved in a car accident in country Victoria, and his main injury is to his right chest. He was taken to a uh, country hospital and they inserted a drain, which drained quite a lot of blood. So he was then airlifted up to the Alfred Hospital here. The bleeding seems to have stopped, but there's concern now that what we call the diaphragm has torn, and in fact his liver on that side has moved up into his chest, so he's undergoing scanning shortly to try and uh, make that diagnosis. Ken's sister, brother, dad and mum have rushed to be by his side. I was home and I received a phone call, so I went straight down there and saw the car first, which gave me a terrible fright because it was totally crushed, like you see in the news. He was crossing a very dangerous intersection, not allowed enough time for this car and it's hit him full on in the driver's door and he took the brunt of the impact. 
He's um, just completed his honours in biomedical science and we're very proud of him for all his accomplishments. Thoracic pod, Paul has arrived from another hospital after a massive heart attack. He's 50. He's actually never known to medical services before. And he presented to Williamstown ED on Sunday um, with ST elevation and chest pain. He had a met call overnight. Um, the balloon pump was put in. We intubated him for the cath lab. Overnight, he's had some BT and arrhythmias. Yep. And he's now gone for what I think is a flutter. Paul's had a, a really, really bad heart attack. His heart's not working properly. And at the moment, he's on a significant amount of life support. Most of his heart's been damaged, so he's having medicine for that. And he's also on a machine that's helping his heart pump the blood around his body. He was at home with his mother and developed pains in the chest. He was quite aware of what was going on, um, and so he got himself to hospital very quickly, which was very good. But unfortunately, his heart attack is very bad. Paul, who is in a drug-induced coma, is being visited by his mother, sister and friends. Hi, my name's Joe Vetra, I'm one of the intensive care doctors. Yes. So at the moment, the main thing is that his heart's um, yes. not pumping as strong as we'd like. It sounds like he's had a heart attack on Sunday, but I suspect he's had heart disease before that, looking at the cardiograph. Because often what happens after a period of resting the heart, it does start to improve. So we'll just watch and see what happens. For some people, I say that, you know, we'll take it day by day. Yeah, or, I think in, in his case, it's every few hours, you know, we'll reassess things. The problem that started all this for Paul is narrowing of the arteries of his heart and his damage to the heart hasn't occurred today. It occurred in all likelihood three, three or so days ago. And whether we can improve him with an urgent operation now is very uncertain. And uh, one of the things that um, will happen if we operate on him while he's so sick is he'll get even sicker. And thinking through all the possible consequences of that took some hours tonight, but we've decided just to leave things as they are for the time being. Paul is as sick as they come in intensive care. Vince and his team have a heck of a challenge ahead. He's precarious at the moment, and the next 12 to 24 hours will be super important. In the Alfred's intensive care unit, bushfire survivor John is back in theatre so doctors can see how his burns are going and if previous skin grafts are taken. John's already had some initial debriding and grafting of burns to his lower legs and to his uh, left hand. So now we're taking him back for a dressing change. It's with much belief that the grafts have all taken and look good. And now we're sort of moving on to completing debriding all of the dead tissue, which still remains, and then hopefully be finished with the surgery for now. Sometimes these grafts don't work because patients are so sick and they can easily take some steps backwards and have infections or get sick at any time. Burns are bad. Out of any patient you see in any intensive care unit, it will always be a burns patient that you remember. If it ends up being a 50% burn that comes in, quite often the 50% that's not burnt ends up being used for donor sites. So you basically end up with, you know, 80, 90, 100% of a per person's body needing dressings. John's had his dressings done today. It's a fairly extensive procedure over nearly four hours. It's taken a fair amount of medication to keep him comfortable. We're letting that uh, wear off and we now look at hopefully in the next 24 hours or so to see if we can uh, extubate him. It's OK, John. It's OK. Meanwhile, car crash survivor Ken is being taken for an MRI. Ken's liver normally is in the abdomen and has been pushed right up into his chest through a hole in the diaphragm. This is the heart. The diaphragm would normally run across there and all of this is liver that has been pushed upwards and has squashed the lung on the right side. So this shouldn't be up here, it should be actually down here. So it's what we call a rupture of the diaphragm. So he's going to need to have surgery to push that back down and close over the defect in the diaphragm. Yeah. We won't be able to get you out of bed for a while yet. Oh, right. They're getting hit 
really very hard from the right, pretty much everything gets just a little shaken around in there. And you're obviously a very lucky guy because yeah. uh, you haven't injured your brain at all, which... The surgery to fix Ken's diaphragm will be the first step in getting him back on his feet. Resilient. <laughs> In the cardiothoracic pod, heart patient Paul keeps getting sicker. Last night, his heart quit beating altogether, and Vince and his team had to shock him repeatedly to keep him in the game. We have used a rescue therapy, a machine called ECMO, to, to support his circulation fully, and he's now safely supported on that. Uh, the ECMO is a machine that takes the blood out of the patient's veins before it returns to the heart. It passes through an oxygenator, something that fills it with oxygen, and it's pumped back into the patient. It functions as both the heart and the lungs. Should, should we start? Yes. Vince has called a meeting to update Paul's family. Um, the problem is that the arteries to the heart yes. are, are blocked yes. and not letting enough blood come to the heart muscle when it's working. Yes. The next step is for him to have um, another small operation yeah. to open up the artery yes. with a balloon. Yeah, an angiogram. A angiogram she and then a, and angiogram. a balloon. Yeah. Angiogram? Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand. Oh. Yes. Do you have any questions? Can I ask you a question? What do you think? I don't know. I don't know what to say. What do you think? It's the first time you've been here. Never sick before. Never. Never sick before. Never. We're doing our best. Paul is terribly sick. His mother is hoping for some divine intervention. Someone gave her this oil from, from Jerusalem, just like a blessing for him, just <laughs> hope for a miracle. I'm sort of still optimistic knowing that he's in good hands and everything is, they're doing everything possible for him, that if anything, they'll pull him through and with his own mind, he, would, he will fight himself because he is a strong character and I'm sure deep down he knows he can fight this. Ten days after getting burnt while helping a mate with his cattle, John has been moved from the intensive care unit to the specialised burns ward, where he's having his first coffee. It's heaven on a stick. Absolutely loving it. <laughs> John came into us with about 45 to 50 per cent burns. This man is a young, otherwise fit man with normal lungs, and his body, apart from the burns, is actually very fit and strong, and we're seeing the results of that. The breathing tube was taken out. He's now breathing independently, and he's awake and uh, progressing well. His burns are particularly his arms and legs, so there's going to be mobility issues with that in the long term. I think the physical care process will be a long one. I expect the psychological process will be far longer. In the Alfred's intensive care unit, Ken's off to theatre after tearing his diaphragm in a bad car crash. Ken has ruptured his diaphragm, which is the layer of muscle that separates the abdominal contents uh, from the chest contents, yeah. and it's very important in helping you to breathe. He's quite lucky in some ways because the amount of force that you need uh, to have sustained in a car accident to cause this injury usually results in a lot of other injuries in the ab abdomen, uh, ruptured livers and ruptured spleens and things. So it's, uh, he's been fortunate in some ways that this is the only serious injury that he's got. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to put a little telescope into the chest just to confirm the diagnosis. We've gone into the chest quite high up and this here is the liver which is sitting up inside the chest. And I suspect that the diaphragmatic tissue is down here somewhere. I need to find that and then push the liver down into the abdomen in order to repair the diaphragm. But there's a lot of liver sitting up in the chest here, well up where it shouldn't be. There's a bit of blood clot on the back of the lung there. It's quite a bit tricky, this one. Well, that's a massive rupture.
Three weeks after coming to the Alfred, John's burns are healing well, but the fire is still fresh in his memory. We thought we'd go and let those cares out of the paddock. So I went down and cut this fence and I heard, heard this mighty roar. Turned around and noticed the wind had changed. I actually just hurled over the barbed wire fence and electric fence and just started running with all I could. But yeah, I knew I couldn't get running. Made it back to the car and the people that I was with, they were looking for me through the smoke. So I knew I was burnt fairly bad when I got in the car. And I got picked up by the people because I could just see the skin blistering and all the hair and everything missing. And I thought I was history. Just three days later, John is making He's... remarkable progress. He walked to the elevator and then got in the wheelchair and had his physio and then he walked all the way back. So today was a really good day. John is certainly so motivated. He's one of the most motivated patients I've seen. And I didn't expect him to get up and, and start walking around so quickly just in the last few days. Good. Let's try 10 of those. Oh, it's still a little bit scary because we've got a few more bridges to cross to get home and we're coping, you know, without the physio coming in and pushing him. They said yesterday that he, he might be um, going home in about three weeks. So that's pretty exciting. Good. Excellent. It's nine days since his surgery, and Ken, who had part of his liver shunted into his chest cavity in a high-speed car crash, is off to rehab. The pain's gone down a fair bit, and I'm able to, to walk around a fair bit on my frame. See you later. Well, I'll definitely um, drive a lot more carefully from now on, that's for sure. I was just really lucky that my injuries weren't any worse than what they are. So, yeah, I think I'll um, be a lot more appreciative of, uh, of what I've got now because a lot more could have been uh, taken away from me after this accident. In the cardiothoracic pod, 50-year-old Paul is still on the heart-lung bypass machine. His sister, brother-in-law and nephews have come to visit. Hi. Got someone that's not to get in there to see him. Oh, he's just so seeing you, Paul. me. Press the button. Just got into a funny rhythm, so I might just get him to stand out there for a minute. All of a sudden, his heart stops. I'll get the defib pad. All right, we're charging, we're going to shock. Clear. Is the adrenaline still on or is that off? It's on and off. Clear. The heart's not doing anything. I don't think it's interacting with the lung at all. But he came back in an hour last time, so it's worth waiting. Although his heart's not beating, Paul's brain is still getting oxygen, thanks to the heart-lung machine. But time is running out. The doctors have got to get his heart going again. All right, we're charging, we're going to shock. Clear. It's been about half an hour, we're into it. No, 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 hey. Oh. We've got him back now, yeah, we've got him back now. He's got a, um, a damaged part of his heart muscle and it triggers an abnormal beating of the heart. So instead of in a coordinated pumping, it just quivers and does nothing. If we can't get him out of this rhythm back into a normal rhythm, he's got no future. There's, there's no more, there's no destination for his therapy anymore. We worry because the longer he stays in it, the harder it is to get him out of it. Uh, if we can control that problem, we're still in the game and it's quite possible to do well. now nine days since Paul had a catastrophic heart attack. And incredibly, an ultrasound reveals his heart is beginning to work on its own. Why don't we just come down to two? How are you going blood pressure-wise? Oh, Plenty of blood yeah. pressure. OK. So he's, he's coping very well. Have we gone down to, we've gone down to one? Yeah. Yeah. Blood pressure's maintained. Think about taking him off. OK, let's have do it Friday morning. Yeah, Friday morning. We'll be crossing our fingers a lot, because if he can stay stable, at this level of function, he might be able to come off all these supports, which is the best imaginable outcome from where Paul started. 
Sure enough, six days later, Paul's ready to be taken off the heart-lung machine. Okay. okay. All right, we're off. On your own? You're on your own. Fine. Wheels are down. We're at a point now where we can take the cannula out and sew them up and send him back to intensive care. Paul's recovery is nothing short of a miracle. To have such protracted ventricular fibrillation where the heart basically just quivered and did no work at all for over an hour and a half on a number of occasions and still recover to where he's likely to leave hospital on tablets from, from where we started. Um, <laughs> it was just so pleased that, that it's come out that well. Six weeks after coming to the Alfred with 50% burns, John is ready to go home. John is really happy to be going home and he can't wait to get out of here and to spend some time with our cat. Sounds absolutely wonderful. Finally to be yet going home. Yeah. Burn with the rain and just be our own selves again. A month has passed, and Paul is now very much alive. In the ICU, all I recall is tubes were hanging out of me, um, doctors were surrounding me and I could hear voices of my family and uh, some friends that were there too. Yes, they are very happy for Paul, right? Me very happy for everybody, doctors, sisters, everything. Look after good for my son. I can only say from the bottom of my heart how overwhelmed I've been with the support. I've had nothing but enormous support. I look after my son, everything all right. Next time, in the Alfred's ICU. Simon, can you give my fingers a squeeze? This is a seizure. A fair proportion of epilepsy we still can't control. Even though we've been in hospital thousands of times, it's still a shock to see him in this state. She's lost a lot of blood. She was a passenger and the car was hit by a use. She's very unstable. The area where they've taken the bone off, we can literally see that swelling. She's the more little girl. Doctors. Despite the fact he's never smoked, he's developed this chronic lung condition. Preparing ourselves for the worst, we were actually talking about a funeral. <laughs>